The Song of the Old Mother by William Butler Yeats From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The Song of the Old Mother I rise in the dawn and I kneel and blow Till the seed of the fire flicker and glow And then I must scrub and bake and sweep till stars are beginning to blink and peep but the young lie long and dream in their bed of the matching of ribbons the blue and the red and the day goes over in idleness and they sigh if the wind but lift up a dress while well, i must work because i am old and the seed of the fire gets feeble and cold end of poem this recording is in the public domain rock me to sleep by elizabeth acres from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Rock me to sleep. Backward, turn backward, O oh time in your flight. Make me a child again just for tonight. Mother, come back from the echoless shore. Take me again to your heart as of yore. Kiss from my forehead the furrows of care. Smooth a few silver threads out of my hair. Over my slumbers your loving watch keep. Rock me to sleep, mother. Rock me to sleep. Backward, flow backward, O oh, tired of the years. I am so weary of toil and of tears. Toil without recompense, tears all in vain. Take them and give me my childhood again. I have grown weary of dust and decay, weary of flinging my soul wealth away, weary of sowing for others to reap. Rock me to sleep, mother, rock me to sleep. Tired of the hollow, the base, the untrue, Mother, oh, mother, my heart calls for you. Many a summer the grass has grown green, Blossomed and faded our faces between. Yet with strong yearning and passionate pain, Long I to-night for your presence again. Come from the silence so long and so deep, Rock me to sleep, mother, rock me to sleep. Over my heart in the days that are flown, No love like a mother love ever has shone. No other worship abides and endures, Faithful, unselfish, and patient like yours. None like a mother can charm away pain From the sick soul in the world-weary brain. Slumber's soft calms o'er my heavy lids creep, Rock me to sleep, mother, rock me to sleep. Come, let your brown hair just lighted with gold Fall on your shoulders again as of old. Let it drop over my forehead to-night, Shading my faint eyes away from the light, For with its sunny-edged shadows once more Haply will throng the sweet visions of yore. Lovingly, softly, its bright billows sweep, Rock me to sleep, mother, rock me to sleep. Mother, dear mother, the years have been long Since I last listened your lullaby song. Sing, then, and unto my soul it shall seem Womanhood's years have been only a dream. Clasped to your heart in a loving embrace, With your light lashes just sweeping your face, Never hereafter to wake or to weep, Rock me to sleep, mother, rock me to sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Children by Charles M. Dickinson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. The Children When the lessons and tasks are all ended, and the school for the day is dismissed, and the little ones gather around me to bid me good night and be kissed, oh, the little white arms that encircle my neck in their tender embrace, oh, the smiles that are halos of heaven shedding sunshine of love on my face and when they are gone i sit dreaming of my childhood too lovely to last 
of love that my heart will remember when it wakes to the pulse of the past ere the world and its wickedness made me a partner of sorrow and sin when the glory of god was about me and the glory of gladness within all my heart grows weak as a woman's and the fountains of feeling will flow when i think of the paths steep and stony where the feet of the dear ones must go of the mountains of sin hanging o'er them of the tempest of fate blowing wild oh there's nothing on earth half so holy as the innocent heart of a child they are idols of hearts and of households they are angels of god in disguise his sunlight still sleeps in their tresses his story still gleams in their eyes oh these truants from home and from heaven they have made me more manly and mild and i know now how jesus could liken the kingdom of god to a child i ask not a life for the dear ones all radiant as others have done but that life may have just enough shadow to temper the glare of the sun i would pray god to guard them from evil but my prayer would bound back to myself ah a seraph may pray for a sinner but a sinner must pray for himself the twig is so easily bended i have banished the rule and the rod i have taught them the goodness of knowledge they have taught me the goodness of god my heart is the dungeon of darkness where i shut them for breaking a rule my frown is sufficient correction my love is the law of the school i shall leave the old house in the autumn to traverse its threshold no more ah how shall i sigh for the dear ones that meet me each morn at the door i shall miss the good nights and the kisses and the gush of their innocent glee the group on its greens and the flowers that are brought every morning to me i shall miss them at morn and at even their song in the school and the street i shall miss the low hum of their voices and the tread of their delicate feet when the lessons of life are all ended and death says the school is dismissed may the little ones gather around me to bid me good night and be kissed charles m dickinson end of poem this recording is in the public domain not one to spare by anonymous from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama as the father sonia as the mother and thomas peter as robert not one to spare which shall it be which shall it be i looked at john john looked at me dear patient john who loves me yet as well as though my locks were jet and when i found that i must speak my voice seemed strangely low and weak tell me again what robert said and then i listening bent my head this is his letter i will give a house and land where you shall live if in return from out your seven one child to me for i is given i looked at john's old garments worn i thought of all that john had borne of poverty and work and care which i though willing could not share i thought of seven mouths to feed of seven little children's need and then of this come john said i we'll choose among them as they lie asleep so walking hand in hand dear john and i surveyed our band first to the cradle lightly stepped where lillian the baby slept a glory against the pillow white softly the father stooped to lay his rough hand down in a gentle way when dream or whisper made her stir and huskily he said not her not her we stopped beside the trundle bed and one long ray of lamplight shed athwart the boyish faces there in sleep so pitiful and fair i saw on jamie's rough red cheek a tear undried ere john could speak he's but a baby too said i and kissed him as we hurried by 
pale patient robbie's angel face still in his sleep bore suffering's trace no for a thousand crowns not him he whispered while our eyes were dim poor dick bad dick our wayward son turbulent reckless idle one could he be spared nay he who gave bid us befriend him to his grave only a mother's heart can be patient enough for such as he and so said john i would not dare to send him from our bedside prayer then stole we softly up above and knelt by mary child of love perhaps for her it would better be i said to john quite silently he lifted up a curl that lay across her cheek in wilful way and shook his head nay love not thee the while my heart beat audibly only one more our eldest lad trusty and truthful good and glad so like his father no john no i cannot will not let him go and so we wrote in kirch's way we could not drive one child away and afterward toil lighter seemed thinking of that of which we dreamed happy in truth that not one face was missed from its accustomed place thankful to work for all the seven trusting the rest to one in heaven end of poem this recording is in the public domain seven times six giving in marriage by jean anglo from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama seven times six giving in marriage to bear to nurse to rear to watch and then to lose to see my bright ones disappear drawn up like morning dews to bear to nurse to rear to watch and then to lose this have i done when god drew near among his own to choose to hear to heed to wed and with thy lord depart in tears that he as soon as shed will let no longer smart to hear to heed to wed this while thou didst i smiled for now it was not god who said mother give me thy child o fond o fool and blind to god i gave with tears but when a man like grace would find my soul put by her fears o fond o fool and blind god guards in happier spheres that man will guard where he did bind is hope for unknown years to hear to heed to wed fair lot that maidens choose thy mother's tenderest words are said thy face no more she views thy mother's lot my dear she doth in not accuse her lot to bear to nurse to rear to love and then to lose jean ingelow end of poem this recording is in the public domain I knew by the smoke that so gracefully curled by Thomas Moore from the world's best poetry volume 1 home and friendship part 2 read for librivox.org by Thomas Peter I knew by the smoke that so gracefully curled I knew by the smoke that so gracefully curled above the green elms that a cottage was near and I said if there's peace to be found in the world a heart that is humble might hope for it here. It was noon, and on flowers that languished around in silence reposed the voluptuous bee. Every leaf was at rest, and I heard not a sound but the woodpecker tapping the hollow beech tree. And, here in this lone little wood, I exclaimed, with a maid who was lovely to soul and to eye, who would blush when I praised her and weep if I blamed, how blessed could I live, and how calm could I die! By the shade of yon sumac, whose red berry dips in the gush of the fountain, 
how sweet to recline and to know that i sighed upon innocent lips which had never been sighed on by any but mine end of poem this recording is in the public domain the ingleside by hugh ainsley from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Ingleside It's rare to see the morning breeze Like a bonfire frae the sea It's fair to see the burny kiss The lip of the flowery lea And fine it is on green hillside Where hums the bonny bee But rarer, fairer, finer far is the ingleside for me glens may be gilt with goans rare the birds may fill the trees and horse they are the scented ware that summer growth can gie but the canty hearth where cronies meet and the darling o' our ee, that makes to us a world complete or the ingleside for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain. By the Fireside by Lucy Larkham From The World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao By the Fireside What is it fades and flickers in the fire? mutters and sighs and yields reluctant breath as if in the red embers some desire some word prophetic burned defying death lords of the forest stalwart oak and pine lie down for us in flames of martyrdom a human household warmth their death fire shine yet fragrant with high memories they come bringing the mountain winds that in their boughs sang of the torrent and the plashy edge of storm-swept lakes and echoes that arouse the eagles from a splintered airy ledge and wrath of violets sweet about their roots and earthly odours of the moss and fern and hum of rivulets smell of ripening fruits and green leaves that to gold and crimson turn what clear septembers fade out in a spark what rare octobers drop with every coal within these costly ashes dumb and dark are hid spring's budding hope and summer's soul pictures far lovelier smoulder in the fire visions of friends who walk among these trees whose presence like the free air could inspire a winged life and boundless sympathies eyes with a glow like that in a brown beech when sunset through its autumn beauty shines or the blue gentian's look of silent speech to heaven appealing as earth's light declines voices and steps forever fled away from the familiar glens the haunted hills most pitiful and strange it is to say without you in a world your lost love fills do you forget us under eden trees or in full sunshine on the hills of god who miss you from the shadow and the breeze and tints and perfumes of the woodland sod dear for your sake the fireside where we sit watching these sad bright pictures come and go that waning years are with your memory lit is the one lonely comfort that we know is it all memory lo these forest bowers burst on the hearth into fresh leaf and bloom waft a vague far-off sweetness through the house and give close walls the hillside's breathing room a second life more spiritual than the first they find a life won only out of death o sainted souls within you still is nursed for us a flame not fed by mortal breath unseen you bring to us who love and wait wafts from the heavenly hills and mortal air no flood can quench your heart's warmth or abate ye are our gladness here and everywhere end of poem this recording is in the public domain my ain fireside by elizabeth hamilton from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org 
by Craig Franklin. My ain fireside. I hae seen great ains and sat in great hairs, mang lords and fine ladies a covered wi brows, at feast made for princes where princes have been, when the grand shine that splendour has dazzled my ain. But a sight so delightful or true I never spied as the bonny blithe blink on my ain fireside. My ain fireside, my ain fireside, a cheery's the blink on my ain fireside. My ain fireside, my ain fireside, are this not to compare wi ain's ain fireside. And's may good be thanked round my ain heart some ingle, with the friends of my youth a cordly mingle. Nay forms to compel me to seem way o' glad, I may laugh when I'm merry and sigh when I'm sad. Nay falsehood to dread, and nay malice to fear, but truth to delight me and friendship to cheer, of our roads to happiness ever were tried. There's nain half so sure as ain's ain fireside. My ain fireside, my ain fireside, are there's not to compare with an ain's fireside. When I drew in my stool on my cosy hearth stain, my heart loops a light, I scarce kent for my ain. Cares down on the wind, it's clear out of sight. Past troubles, they seem but as dreams of the night. I hear but ken voices, ken faces I see, and mark saft affection glint fond frae ill key. Ne fleechings or flattery, ne boostings of pride. Tis heart speaks to heart at ain's ain fireside. My ain fireside, my ain fireside, are there's not to compare with ain's ain fireside. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Winter Evening Hymn to My Fire by James Russell Lowell From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia a winter evening hymn to my fire o thou of home the guardian lar and when our earth hath wandered far into the cold and deep snow covers the walks of our new england lovers their sweet secluded evening star twas with thy rays the english muse ripened her mild domestic hues twas by thy flicker that she conned the fireside wisdom that enrings with light from heaven familiar things by thee she found the homely faith in whose mild eyes thy comfort stays when death extinguishing his torch gropes for the latch-string in the porch the love that wanders not beyond his earliest nest but sits and sings while children smooth his patient wings therefore with thee i love to read our brave old poets at thy touch how stirs life in the withered words how swift recede time's shadows and how glows again through its dead mass the incandescent verse as when upon the anvils of the brain it glittering lay cyclopically wrought by the fast throbbing hammers of the poet's thought thou murmurest too divinely stirred the aspirations unattained the rhythms so rath and delicate they bent and strained and broke beneath the sombre weight of any airiest mortal word. What warm protection dost thou bend round curtained talk of friend with friend, while the grey snowstorm held aloof to softest outline rounds the roof, or the rude north with baffled strain shoulders the frost starred window pane? Now the kind nymph to Bacchus born by Morpheus' daughter she that seems gifted upon her natal morn by him with fire by her with dreams nicotia dearer to the muse than all the grapes bewildering jews we worship unforbid of thee and as her incense floats and curls in airy spires and wayward whirls or poises on its tremulous stalk a flower of frailest reverie so winds and loiters idly free the current of unguided talk now laughter rippled and now caught in smooth dark pools of deeper thought meanwhile thou mellowest every word a sweetly unobtrusive third 
for thou hast magic beyond wine to unlock natures each to each the unspoken thought thou canst divine thou fillst the pauses of the speech with whispers that to dreamland reach and frozen fancy springs unchain in arctic outskirts of the brain son of all inmost confidences to thy race doth the heart unclose its formal calyx of pretences that close against rude days offences and open its shy midnight rose end of poem this recording is in the public domain the lighthood fire by john henry boner from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin the lighted fire when wintry days are dark and drear and all the forest ways grow still when gray snow-laden clouds appear along the bleak horizon hill when cattle all are snugly penned and sheep go huddling close together when steady streams of smoke ascend from farmhouse chimneys in such weather give me old carolina's own a great log house a great hearthstone a cheering pipe of cob or briar and a red leaping lighted fire when dreary day draws to a close and all the silent land is dark when boreas down the chimney blows and sparks fly from the crackling bark when limbs are bent with snow or sleet and owls hoot from the hollow tree with hounds asleep about your feet then is the time for reverie give me old carolina's own a hospitable wide hearthstone a cheering pipe of cob or briar and a red rousing lighted fire End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cotter's Saturday Night by Robert Burns From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator And Craig Franklin as the Cotter The Cotter's Saturday Night inscribed to r aiken esq let not ambition mock their useful toil their homely joys and destiny obscure nor grandeur here with a disdainful smile the short but simple annals of the poor gray my loved my honoured much respected friend no mercenary bard his homage pays with honest pride i scorn each selfish end my dearest meet a friend's esteem and praise to you i sing in simple scottish lays the lowly train in life's sequestered scene the native feeling strong the guileless ways what aiken in a cottage would have been ah though his worth unknown far happier there i ween november chill blows loud with angry sow the shortening winter day is near a close the miry beasts retreating frow the plough the blackening trains across to their repose the toil-worn cotter fra his labour goes this night his weekly moil is at an end collects his spades his mattocks and his hose hoping the morn in ease and rest to spend and weary over the moor his course does homeward bend at length his lonely cot appears in view beneath the shelter of an aged tree the expectant wee things toddlin stagger true to meet their dead with flichtering noise and glee his wee bit ingle blinking bonnily his clean hearth stain his thrifty wifey smile the lisping infant prattling on his knee does all his weary carking cares beguile and makes him quite forget his labour and his toil believe the elder bairns come drapping in at service out among the farmers round some car the plough some herd some tent dear in a canny errand to a neighbour town their eldest hope their jenny 
woman grown in youthful bloom love sparkling in her e come sam perhaps to show a brown new gown or deposit her sair one penny fee to help her parents dear if they in hardship be with joy unfeigned brothers and sisters meet and each for others welfare kindly spears the social hours swift-winged unnoticed fleet each tells the uncles that he sees or hears the parents partial eye their hopeful years anticipation forward points the view the mother with her needle and her shears gars old clay's look amazed as swells the new the father mixes all with admonition due their masters and their mistresses command the yonkers are a warned to obey and mind their labours with an aid and hand and never though out of sight to joke or play and oh be sure to fear the lord alway and mind your duty duly morn and night lest in temptation's path ye gang astray implore his counsel and assisting might they never sought in vain that sought the lord aright but hark a rap comes gently to the door jenny what kens the meaning of the same tells how a neighbour lad came over the moor to do some errands and convey her hame the wily mother sees the conscious flame sparkle in jenny's e and flush her cheek with heart-struck anxious care inquires his name while jenny Halflins is afraid to speak well pleased the mother hears it's now wild worthless rake with kindly welcome jenny brings him in a strapping youth he tacks the mother's e blithe jenny sees the visits no ill thing the father cracks of horses ploughs and key the youngster's artless heart overflows with joy but blade and lithful scarce can well behave the mother with a woman's wiles can spy what makes the youth so bashful and so grave well pleased to think her bairns respected like the lave o oh, happy love where love like this is found o oh, heartfelt raptures bliss beyond compare i've paced much this weary mortal round and sage experience bids me this declare if heaven a draught of heavenly pleasure spare one cordial in this melancholy vale tis when a youthful loving modest pair in others arms breathe out the tender tale beneath the milk-white thorn that scents the evening gale is there in human form that bears a heart a wretch a villain lost to love and truth that can with studied sly and snaring art betray sweet jenny's unsuspecting youth curse on his perjured arts dissembling smooth are honour virtue conscience all exiled is there no pity no relenting ruth points to the parents fondling over their child then paints the ruined maid and their distraction wild but now the supper crowns their simple board the hailsome parish chief of scotia's food the soup their only hawky does afford that yon the helen snugly chose her cood the dame brings forth in complimental mood to grace the lad her well hained kebbock fell and aft he's pressed and aft he calls it good the frugal wifey garrulous will tell how it was a town old since lind was in the bell the cheerful supper done with serious face they round the ingle form a circle wide the sire turns over with patriarchal grace the big hair bible and his father's pride his bonnet reverently is laid aside his lyre taffets wearing thin and bare those strains that once did sweet in zion glide he wails a portion with judicious care and let us worship god he says with solemn air they chant their artless notes in simple guise they tune their hearts by far the noblest aim perhaps dundee's wild warbling measures rise or plaintive martyrs worthy of the name or noble elgin beats the heavenward flame the sweetest far of scotia's holy lays compared with these italian trills are tame the tickled ears no heartfelt raptures raise nay unison had they with our creator's praise 
the priest-like father reads the sacred page how abram was the friend of god on high or moses bade eternal warfare wage with amalek's ungracious progeny or how the royal bard did groaning lie beneath the stroke of heaven's avenging ire or job's pathetic plaint and wailing cry or wrapped isaiah's wild seraphic fire or other holy seers that tune the sacred lyre perhaps the christian volume is the theme how guiltless blood for guilty men was shed how he who bore in heaven the second name had not on earth whereon to lay his head how his first followers and servants sped the precept sage they rode to many a land how he who lone in patmos banished saw in the sun a mighty angel stand and heard great babylon's doom pronounced by heaven's command then kneeling down to heaven's eternal king the saint the father and the husband prays hope springs exulting on triumphant wing that thus they all shall meet in future days there ever bask in uncreated rays no more to sigh or shed a bitter tear together hymning their creator's praise in such society yet still more dear while circling time moves round in an eternal sphere compared with this how poor religion's pride in all the pomp of method and of art when men display to congregations wide devotion's every grace except the heart the power incensed the pageant will desert the pompous strain the sacerdotal stole but haply in some cottage far apart may hear well pleased the language of the soul and in his book of life the inmates poor enroll then homeward all take off their several way the youngling cottagers retire to rest the parent pair their secret homage pay and proffer up to heaven the warm request that he who stills the raven's clamorous nest and decks the lily fair in flowery pride would in the way his wisdom sees the best for them and for their little ones provide but chiefly in their hearts with grace divine preside from scenes like these old scotia's grandeur springs that makes her loved at home revered abroad princes and lords are but the breath of kings an honest man's the noblest work of god and certes in fair virtue's heavenly road the cottage leaves the palace far behind what is a lordling's pomp a cumbrous load disguising of the wretch of humankind studied in arts of hell in wickedness refined o scotia my dear my native soil for whom my warmest wish to heaven is sent long may thy hardy sons of rustic toil be blessed with health and peace and sweet content and o oh, may heaven their simple lives prevent from luxury's contagion weak and vile then however crowns and coronets be rent a virtuous populace may rise the while and stand a wall of fire around their much-loved isle o oh, thou who poured the patriotic tide that streamed through wallace's undaunted heart who dare to nobly stem tyrannic pride or nobly die the second glorious part the patriot's god peculiarly thou art his friend inspirer guardian and reward o oh, never never scotia's realm desert but still the patriot and the patriot bard in bright succession raise her ornament and guard End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A New England Home in Winter From Snowbound by John Greenleaf Whittier From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter A New England Home in Winter From Snowbound the sun that brief december day rose cheerless over hills of gray and darkly circled gave at noon a sadder light than waning moon slow tracing down the thickening sky its mute and ominous prophecy 
a portent seeming less than threat, it sank from sight before it set. A chill no coat, however stout, of homespun stuff could quite shut out. A hard, dull bitterness of cold that checked, mid vein, the circling race of life blood in the sharpened face. The coming of the snowstorm told. The wind blew east, we heard the roar of ocean on his wintry shore and felt the strong pulse throbbing there beat with low rhythm our inland air unwarmed by any sunset light the gray day darkened into night a night made hoary with the swarm and whirl dance of the blinding storm as zigzag wavering to and fro crossed and recrossed the winged snow and ere the early bedtime came the white drift piled the window frame and through the glass the clothesline posts looked in like tall and sheeted ghosts so all night long the storm roared on the morning broke without a sun in tiny spheral traced with lines of nature's geometric signs in starry flake and pellicle all day the hoary meteor fell and when the second morning shone we looked upon a world unknown on nothing we could call our own around the glistening wonder bent the blue walls of the firmament no cloud above no earth below a universe of sky and snow as night drew on and from the crest of wooded knolls that ridged the west the sun a snow-blown traveller sank from sight beneath the smothering bank we piled with care our nightly stack of wood against the chimney back the oaken log green huge and thick and on its top the stout back stick the knotty force stick laid apart and filled between with curious art the ragged brush then hovering near we watched the first red blaze appear, heard the sharp crackle, caught the gleam on whitewashed wall and sagging beam, until the old rude furnished room burst flower like into rosy bloom. Shut in from all the world without, we sat the clean winged hearth about, content to let the north wind roar in baffled rage at pane and door, while the red logs before us beat the frost line back with tropic heat and ever when a louder blast shook beam and rafter as it passed the merrier up its roaring draught the great throat of the chimney laughed the house dog on his paws outspread lay to the fire his drowsy head the cat's dark silhouette on the wall a couch and tigers seemed to fall and for the winter fireside meet between the andirons straddling feet the mug of cider simmered slow the apples sputtered in a row and close at hand the basket stood with nuts from brown october's wood what matter how the night behaved what matter how the north wind raved blow high blow low not all its snow could quench our hearth fire's ruddy glow oh time and change with hair as grey as was my sire's that wintry day how strange it seems with so much gone of life and love to still live on ah brother only i and thou are left of all that circle now the dear home faces were upon that fitful firelight paled and shone henceforward listen as we will the voices of that hearth are still look where we may the wide earth o'er those lighted faces smile no more we tread the paths their feet have worn we sit beneath their orchard trees we hear like them the hum of bees and rustle of the bladed corn we turn the pages that they read their written words we linger o'er but in the sun they cast no shade no voice is heard no sign is made no step is on the conscious floor yet love will dream and faith will trust since he who knows our need is just that somehow somewhere meet we must 
alas for him who never sees the stars shine through his cypress trees who hopeless lays his dead away nor looks to see the breaking day across the mournful marbles play who hath not learned in hours of faith the truth to flesh and sense unknown that life is ever lord of death and love can never lose its own end of poem this recording is in the public domain Heart Rest from Philip Van Arteveld by Sir Henry Taylor From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Heart Rest from Philip Van Arteveld The heart of man, walk in which way it will, sequestered or frequented, smooth or rough, down the deep valleys amongst tinkling flocks, or mid the clang of trumpets and the march of clattering ordnance, still must have its halt, its hour of truce, its instant of repose, its inn of rest, and craving still must seek the food of its affections, still must slake its constant thirst of what is fresh and pure and pleasant to behold. Sir Henry Taylor End of Poem this recording is in the public domain. The Means to Attain Happy Life by Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Means to Attain Happy Life marshal the things that do attain the happy life be these i find the riches left not got with pain the fruitful ground the quiet mind the equal friend no grudge no strife no charge of rule nor governance without disease the healthful life the household of continuance the mean diet no delicate fare true wisdom joined with simpleness the night discharged of all care where wine the wit may not oppress the faithful wife without debate such sleeps as may beguile the night contented with thine own estate nay wish for death nay fear his might end of poem this recording is in the public domain Homeward Bound by Catullus, translated from Latin by Sir Theodore Martin, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Homeward Bound, dear Sirmio, that art the very eye of islands and peninsulas that lie deeply embosomed in calm inland lake, or where the waves of the vast ocean break, joy of all joys to gaze on thee once more i scarce believe that i have left the shore of thynia and bithynia's parching plain and gaze on thee in safety once again o oh, what more sweet than when from care set free the spirit lays its burden down and we with distant travel spent come home and spread our limbs to rest along the wished-for bed this this alone repays such toils as these smile then fair sirmio and thy master please and you ye dancing waters of the lake rejoice and every smile of home awake end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hudson by george sidney hellman from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org, by Thomas Peter. The Hudson Where in its old historic splendor stands The home of England's far-famed Parliament, And waters of the Thames in calm content At England's fame flow slowly o'er their sands, 
and where the rhine passed vine entwined lands courses and castled beauty there i went and far to southern rivers flower besprent and to the icy streams of northern strands then mine own native shores i trod once more and gazing on thy water's majesty the memory o hudson came to me of one who went to seek the wide world o'er for love but found it not then home turned he and saw his mother waiting at the door end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Wanderer's Home from the Traveller by Oliver Goldsmith From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin The Wanderer's Home from the Traveller Remote, unfriended, melancholy slow Or by the lazy shelt or wandering po, Or onward where the rude corinthian bore against the houseless stranger shuts the door or where campania's plain forsaken lies a weary waste expanding to the skies where'er i roam whatever realms to see my heart untravelled fondly turns to thee still to my brother turns with ceaseless pain and drags at each remove a lengthening chain eternal blessings crown my earliest friend and round his dwelling guardian saints attend blessed be that spot where cheerful guests retire to pause from toil and time their evening fire blessed that abode where want and pain repair and every stranger finds a ready chair Blessed be those feasts, with simple plenty crowned, Where all the ruddy family round Laughs at the jests or pranks that never fail, Or sigh with pity at some mournful tale, Or press the bashful stranger to his food, And learn the luxury of doing good. But where to find that happiest spot below, Who can direct when all pretend to know? that shuddering tenant of the frigid zone boldly proclaims that happiest spot his own extols the treasure of his stormy seas and his long nights of revelry and ease the naked negro panting at the line boasts of his golden sands and palmy wine basks in the glare or stems the tepid wave and thanks his gods for all the good they gave such is the patriot's boast where'er we roam his first best country ever is at home and yet perhaps if countries we compare and estimate the blessings which they share though patriots flatter still shall wisdom find an equal portion dealt to all mankind as different good by art or nature given to different nations makes their blessings even end of poem this recording is in the public domain a picture by charles gamage eastman from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama as the narrator and Sonia as the girl. A picture. The farmer sat in his easy chair, smoking his pipe of clay, while his hale old wife, with busy care, was clearing the dinner away. A sweet little girl with fine blue eyes on her grandfather's knee was catching flies. The old man laid his hand on her head with a tear on his wrinkled face. He thought how often her mother, dead, had sat in the self-same place. As the tear stole down from his half-shut eye, Don't smoke, said the child. How it makes you cry. 
The house dog lay stretched out on the floor, where the shade after noon used to steal. The busy old wife by the open door was turning the spinning wheel. And the old brass clock on the mantel tree had plodded along to almost three. Still the farmer sat in his easy chair, while close to his heaving breast the moistened brow and the cheek so fair of his sweet grandchild were pressed. His head bent down on her soft hair lay, fast asleep were they both that summer day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Cellar From Bittersweet by Josiah Gilbert Holland From The World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao In the Cellar Sixteen barrels of cider ripening all in a row Open the vent channels wider See the froth drifted like snow Blown by the tempest below those delectable juices flow through the sinuous sluices of sweet springs under the orchard, climbed into fountains that chained them, dripped into cups that retained them, and swelled till they dropped, and we gained them. Then they were gathered and tortured by passage from hopper to vat, and fell, every apple crushed flat. Ah, oh, how the bees gathered round them, and how delicious they found them! Oat straw as fragrant as clover was plaited and smoothly turned over weaving a neatly ribbed basket, and as they built up the casket, in went the pulp by the scoopful, till the juice flowed by the stoopful, filling the half of a puncheon, while the men swallowed their luncheon. Pure grew the stream with the stress of the lever and screw, till the last drops from the press were as bright as the dew. There were these juices spilled, there were these barrels filled, sixteen barrels of cider, ripening all in a row. Open the vent channels wider, see the froth drifted like snow, blown by the tempest below. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Pictures by Annie D. Green, Marion Douglas From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao as the narrator thomas peter as the boy and jason in panama as the man two pictures an old farmhouse with meadows wide and sweet with clover on each side a bright-eyed boy who looks from out the door with woodbine wreathed about and wishes his one thought all day oh if i could but fly away from this dull spot the world to see how happy 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 how happy i should be amid the city's constant din a man who round the world has been who mid the tumult and the throng is thinking thinking all day long oh could i only tread once more the field path to the farmhouse door the old green meadow could i see how happy 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 how happy i should be End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Shepherd's Life from Third Part of Henry VI Act Two, Scene Five by William Shakespeare From the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama A Shepherd's Life from third part of Henry VI, Act Two, Scene Five. King Henry, O oh God, methinks it were a happy life to be no better than a homely swain, to sit upon a hill as I do now, to carve out dials quaintly, point by point, thereby to see the minutes how they run, how many make the hour full complete, how many hours bring about the day. How many days will finish up the year? How many years a mortal man may live? When this is known, then to divide the times. So many hours must I tend to my flock. So many hours must I take my rest. 
So many hours must I contemplate, So many hours must I sport myself, So many days my ewes have been with young, So many weeks ere the poor fools will e'en, So many years ere I shall shear the fleece, So minutes, hours, days, months, and years, Passed over to the end they were created, Would bring white hairs unto a quiet grave. Ah, what a life were this! How sweet! How lovely! Gives not the hawthorn bush a sweeter shade to shepherds, Looking on their silly sheep, Than doth a rich embroidered canopy to kings that fear their subjects' treachery? Shakespeare End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Country Life by Richard Henry Stoddard From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Country Life Not what we would, but what we must, makes up the sum of living. Heaven is both more and less than just, in taking and in giving. Swords cleave to hands that sought the plough, and laurels miss the soldier's brow me whom the city holds whose feet have worn its stony highways familiar with its loneliest street its ways were never my ways my cradle was beside the sea and there i hope my grave will be old homestead in that old grey town thy vein is seaward blowing the slip of garden stretches down to where the tide is flowing below they lie their sails all furled the ships that go about the world dearer that little country house inland with pines beside it some peach trees with unfruitful boughs a well with weeds to hide it no flowers or only such as rise self-sown poor things which all despise dear country home can i forget the least of thy sweet trifles the window vines that clamber yet whose bloom the bee still rifles the roadside blackberries growing ripe and in the woods the indian pipe happy the man who tills his field content with rustic labour earth does to him her fullness yield hap what may to his neighbour well days sound nights oh can there be a life more rational and free dear country life of child and man for both the best the strongest that with the earliest race began and has outlived the longest their cities perished long ago who the first farmers were we know perhaps our babels too will fall if so no lamentations for mother earth will shelter all and feed the unborn nations yes and the swords that menace now will then be beaten to the plough. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Swiss Peasant From the Traveller by Oliver Goldsmith From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter The Swiss Peasant From the Traveller Turn me to survey Where rougher climes and nobler race display, Where the bleak Swiss their stormy mansion tread, And force a churlish soil for scanty bread. No product here the barren hills afford, But man and steel, the soldier and his sword. No vernal blooms their torpid rocks array, But winter lingering chills the lap of May. No zephyr fondly soothes the mountain's breast, But meteors glare, and stormy glooms invest. Yet still, even here, content can spread a charm, Redress the clime, and all its rage disarm. Though poor the peasant's hut, his feast though small, He sees his little lot the lot of all, Sees no contiguous palace rear its head, to shame the meanness of his humble shed. No costly lord the sumptuous banquet deal, To make him loathe his vegetable meal. 
but calm and bred in ignorance and toil each wish contracting fits him to the soil cheerful at morn he wakes from short repose breathes the keen air and carols as he goes with patient angle trolls the finny deep or drives his venturous ploughshare to the steep or seeks the den where snow tracks mark the way and drags the struggling savage into day at night returning every labor sped he sits him down the monarch of a shed smiles by a cheerful fire and round surveys his children's looks that brighten to the blaze while his loved partner boastful of her hoard displays her cleanly platter on the board and haply too some pilgrim thither led with many a tale repays the nightly bed thus every good his native wilds impart imprints the patriot lesson on his heart and e'en those ills that round his mansion rise enhance the bliss his scanty fund supplies dear is that shed to which his soul conforms and dear that hill that lifts him to the storms and as a child when scaring sounds molest clings close and closer to the mother's breast so the loud torrent and the whirlwind's roar but bind him to his native mountains more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When the Cows Come Home by Agnes E. Mitchell From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia When the Cows Come Home with klingle klangle klingle way down the dusty dingle the cows are coming home now sweet and clear and faint and low the airy tinklings come and go like chimings from some far-off tower or patterings of an april shower that makes the daisies grow co kling co clang co klingalingle way down the darkening dingle the cows come slowly home with jingle jangle jingle soft sounds that sweetly mingle the cows are coming home malim and pearl and florimel the camp red rose and gretchen shell queen bess and sylph and spangled sue across the field i hear loo and clang her silver bell go ling go lang go ling a ling -a with faint far sounds that mingle the cows come slowly home and mother songs of long gone years and baby joys and childish fears and youthful hopes and youthful fears when the cows come home with ringle wrangle ringle by twos and threes and single the cows are coming home through the violet air we see the town and the summer sun a slipping down the maple in the hazel glade throws down the path a longer shade and the hills are growing brown to ring to rang to ringle a ringle by threes and fours and single the cows come slowly home the same sweet sound of wordless psalm the same sweet june day rest and calm the same sweet scent of bud and balm when the cows come home with a tinkle tankle tinkle through fern and periwinkle the cows are coming home a loitering in the checkered stream where the sun rays glance and gleam starine peach bloom and phoebe phyllis stand knee deep in the creamy lilies in a drowsy dream to link to lank to linkle linkle over banks with buttercups a twinkle the cows come slowly home and up through memory's deep ravine come the brook's old song and its old-time sheen and the crescent of the silver queen when the cows come home with a klingle klangle klingle with a loo and moo and jingle the cows are coming home and over there on merlin hill hear the plaintive cry of the whippoorwill the dewdrops lie on the tangled vines and over the poplars venus shines and over the silent mill 
coling colang colingalingle with a tingling and jingle the cows come slowly home let down the bars let in the train of long gone songs and flowers and rain for dear old times come back again when the cows come home end of poem this recording is in the public domain home song by duncan campbell scott from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by lian yao home song there is rain upon the window there is wind upon the tree the rain is slowly sobbing the wind is blowing free it bears my weary heart to my own country i hear the white throat calling hid in the hazel ring deep in the misty hollows i hear the sparrows sing i see the blood roots starting all silvered with the spring i skirt the buried reed beds in the starry solitude my snowshoes creak and whisper i have my ready blood i hear the lynx club yelling in the gaunt and shaggy wood i hear the wolf-tongued rapid howl in the rocky brake beyond the vines at the portage i hear the trapper wake his en roulant ma boule from the clear gloom of the lake oh take me back to the homestead to the great rooms warm and low where the frost creeps on the casement where the year comes in with snow give me give me the old folk of the dear long ago oh land of the dusky balsam and the darling maple tree where the cedar buds and berries and the pine grows strong and free my heart is weary and weary for my own country. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Labor Song From The Bell Founder by Dennis Florence McCarthy From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter Labor Song from the Bell Founder Ah, little they know of true happiness, they whom satiety fills, who, flung on the rich breast of luxury, eat of the rankness that kills. Ah, little they know of the blessedness toil purchased slumber enjoys, who, stretched on the hard rack of indolence, taste of the sleep that destroys nothing to hope for or labor for nothing to sigh for or gain nothing to light in its vividness lightning like bosom and brain nothing to break life's monotony rippling it o'er with its breath nothing but dullness and lethargy weariness sorrow and death but blessed that child of humanity happiest man among men who with hammer or chisel or pencil, with rudder or ploughshare or pen, laboureth ever and ever with hope through the morning of life, winning home and its darling divinities, love worship children and wife. Round swings the hammer of industry, quickly the sharp chisel rings, and the heart of the toiler has throbbings that stir not the bosom of kings. He the true ruler and conqueror, he the true king of his race who nerveth his arm for life's combat and looks the strong world in the face end of poem this recording is in the public domain the village blacksmith by henry wadsworth longfellow from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Village Blacksmith Under a spreading chestnut tree, the village smithy stands. The smith, a mighty man is he, with large and sinewy hands, and the muscles of his brawny arms are strong as iron bands. His hair is crisp and black and long, his face is like the tan, his brow is wet with honest sweat, he earns whatever he can and looks the whole world in the face 
for he owes not any man week in week out from morn till night you can hear his bellows blow you can hear him swing his heavy sledge with measured beat and slow like a sexton ringing the village bell when the evening sun is low and children coming home from school look in at the open door they love to see the flaming forge and hear the bellows roar and catch the burning sparks that fly like chaff from the threshing floor he goes on sunday to the church and sits among his boys he hears the parson pray and preach he hears his daughter's voice singing in the village choir and it makes his heart rejoice it sounds to him like her mother's voice singing in paradise he needs must think of her once more how in the grave she lies and with his hard rough hand he wipes a tear out of his eyes toiling rejoicing sorrowing onward through life he goes each morning sees some task begin each evening sees it close something attempted something done has earned a night's repose thanks thanks to thee my worthy friend for the lesson thou hast taught thus at the flaming forge of life our fortunes must be wrought thus on its sounding anvil shaped each burning deed and thought end of poem this recording is in the public domain christmas by george wither from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by thomas peter christmas so now is come our joyfulest feast let every man be jolly each room with ivy leaves is dressed and every post with holly though some churls at our mirth repine round your foreheads garlands twine drown sorrow in a cup of wine and let us all be merry now all our neighbors chimneys smoke and christmas blocks are burning their ovens they with baked meat choke and all their spits are turning without the door let sorrow lie and if for cold it hap to die we'll bury it in a christmas pie and evermore be merry now every lad is wondrous trim and no man minds his labor our lasses have provided them a bagpipe and a tabor young men and maids and girls and boys give life to one another's joys and you anon shall by their noise perceive that they are merry rank misers now do sparing shun their hall of music soundeth and dogs thence with whole shoulders run so all things there aboundeth the country folks themselves advance with crowdy muttons out of france and jack shall pipe and jill shall dance and all the town be merry ned squash has fetched his bands from pawn and all his best apparel brisk nell hath bought a ruff of lawn with dropping of the barrel and those that hardly all the year had bread to eat or rags to wear will have both clothes and dainty fare and all the day be merry now poor men to the justices with capons make their errands and if they hap to fail of these they plague them with their warrants but now they feed them with good cheer and what they want they take in beer for christmas comes but once a year and then they shall be merry good farmers in the country nurse the poor that else were undone some landlords spend their money worse on lust and pride at london there the roisters they do play drab and dice their lands away which may be ours another day and therefore let's be merry the client now his suit forbears the prisoner's heart is eased the debtor drinks away his cares and for the time is pleased though others purses be more fat why should we pine or grieve at that hang sorrow care will kill a cat and therefore let's be merry hark now the wags abroad do call each other forth to rambling anon you'll see them in the hall 
for nuts and apples scrambling hark how the roofs with laughter sound anon they'll think the house goes round for they the cellar's depths have found and there they will be merry the wenches with their wassail bowls about the streets are singing the boys are come to catch the owls the wild mare in is bringing our kitchen boy hath broke his box and to the dealing of the ox our honest neighbours come by flocks and here they will be merry now kings and queens poor sheepcoats have and mate with everybody the honest now may play the knave and wise men play the noddy some youths will now a mummin go some others play at roll and bow and twenty other game boys mow because they will be merry then wherefore in these merry days should we i pray be duller no let us sing some round lays to make our mirth the fuller and while we thus inspired sing let all the streets with echoes ring woods and hills and everything bear witness we are merry End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Folks by Andrew Park From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The Old Folks The old folks sit by the fire When the winter nicks are chill the old wife she plies her wire, the old man he quaffs his yill. And Michael and Lang they speak of their youthful days gin by, when the rose it was on the cheek, and the pearl was on the eye. They talk of their bairnies' bairns, they talk of the brave and free, they talk of their mountain cairns, and they talk of the rolling sea. And Michael Lang they speak, or their youthful days gin by when the rose it was on the cheek and the pearl it was on the eye they talk of their friends lang gain and the tear drips blind their e they talk of the cold kirkstein where soon they baith mun be yet each has had their half of the joys of this fitful sphere so whiles the old folk laugh and whiles they drap a tear End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Petition to Time by Brian Waller Proctor, Barry Cornwall From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao A Petition to Time Touch us gently, time. Let us glide adown thy stream gently, as we sometimes glide through a quiet dream. Humble voyagers are we, husband, wife, and children three. One is lost, an angel fled to the azure overhead. Touch us gently, time. We've not proud nor soaring wings. Our ambition, our content, lies in simple things. Humble voyagers are we, o'er life's dim, unsounded sea. Seeking only some calm clime, Toss us gently, gentle time. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Home, Sweet Home, from Clary, the Maid of Milan, by John Howard Payne. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Home, sweet home, from Clary, the maid of Milan Mid pleasures and palaces, though we may roam, Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. A charm from the sky seems to hallow us there, Which, seek through the world, is ne'er met with elsewhere. Home, home, sweet, sweet home, There's no place like home, there's no place like home. An exile from home, splendor dazzles in vain. Oh, give me my lowly thatched cottage again. The birds singing gaily, that came at my call. Give me them, and the peace of mind dearer than all. 
Home, home, sweet, sweet home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. How sweet it is to sit neath a fond father's smile, and the cares of a mother to soothe and beguile. Let others delight mid new pleasures to roam, but give me, oh, give me the pleasures of home. Home, home, sweet, sweet home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. To thee I'll return, overburdened with care. The heart's dearest solace will smile on me there. No more from that cottage again will I roam. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Home, home, sweet, sweet home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. John Howard Payne End of Poem this recording is in the public domain. Friendship by Ralph Waldo Emerson From The World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao Friendship A ruddy drop of manly blood The surging sea outweighs the world uncertain comes and goes, the lover rooted stays. I fancied he was fled, and after many a year, glowed unexhausted kindliness, like daily sunrise there. My careful heart was free again, O oh, friend, my bosom said, Through thee alone the sky is arched, through thee the rose is red. All things through thee take nobler form, and look beyond the earth. The mill round of our fate appears, a sun path in thy worth. Me too thy nobleness has taught to master my despair. The fountains of my hidden life are through thy friendship fair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Friendship from Night Thoughts, Night Two by Dr. Edward Young From the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. Friendship from Night Thoughts, Night Two. Celestial happiness, whene'er she stoops to visit earth, one shrine the goddess finds, and one alone to make her sweet amends for absent heaven, the bosom of a friend, where heart meets heart, reciprocally soft each other's pillow to repose divine. Beware the counterfeit in passion's flame, hearts melt, but melt like ice soon harder froze. True love strikes root in reason, passion's foe, virtue alone intenders us for life. I wrong her much, intenders us forever. Of friendship's fairest fruits, the fruit most fair is virtue, kindling at a rival fire and emulously rapid in her race or the soft enmity endearing strife this carries friendship to her noontide point and gives the rivet of eternity from friendship which outlives my former themes glorious survivor of all time and death from friendship thus that flower of heavenly seed the wise extract earth's most hyblian bliss superior wisdom crowned with smiling joy what if since daring on so nice a theme i show thee friendship delicate as dear of tender violations apt to die reserve will wound it and distrust destroy deliberate in all things with thy friend but since friends grow not thick on every bough not every friend unrotten at the core first on thy friend deliberate with thyself pause ponder sift not eager in the choice nor jealous of the chosen fixing fix judge before friendship then confide till death friendship's the wine of life but friendship knew not such was his is neither strong nor pure oh for the bright complexion cordial warmth 
an elevating spirit of a friend for twenty summers ripening by my side all feculence of falsehood long thrown down all social virtues rising in his soul as crystal clear and smiling as they rise here nectar flows it sparkles in our sight rich to the taste and genuine from the heart high flavoured bliss for gods on earth how rare end of poem this recording is in the public domain bill and joe by oliver wendell holmes from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by thomas peter as joe craig franklin as bill and lian yao as the young folks bill and joe from poems of the class of twenty nine harvard come dear old comrade you and i will steal an hour from days gone by the shining days when life was new and all was bright as morning dew the lusty days of long ago when you were bill and i was joe your name may flaunt a titled trail proud as a cockerel's rainbow tail and mine as brief appendix wear as tam o' shanter's luckless mare to-day old friend remember still that i am joe and you are bill you've won the great world's envied prize and grand you look in people's eyes with h o n and l l d in big brave letters fair to see your fist old fellow off they go how are you bill how are you joe you've worn the judge's ermined robe you've taught the name to half the globe you've sung mankind a deathless strain you've made the dead past live again the world may call you what it will but you and i are joe and bill the chaffing young folks stare and say see those old buffers bent and grey they talk like fellows in their teens mad poor old boys that's what it means and shake their heads they little know the throbbing hearts of bill and joe how bill forgets his hour of pride while joe sits smiling at his side how joe in spite of time's disguise finds the old schoolmate in his eyes those calm stern eyes that melt and fill as joe looks fondly up at bill ah pensive scholar what is fame a fitful tongue of leaping flame a giddy whirlwind's fickle gust that lifts a pinch of mortal dust a few swift years and who can show which dust was bill and which was joe the weary idol takes his stand holds out his bruised and aching hand while gaping thousands come and go how vain it seems this empty show till all at once his pulses thrill tis poor old joe's god bless you bill and shall we breathe in happier spheres the names that pleased our mortal ears in some sweet lull of harp and song for earth-born spirits none too long just whispering of the world below where this was bill and that was joe no matter while our home is here no sounding name is half so dear when fades at length our lingering day who cares what pompous tombstones say read on the hearts that love us still hic jacet joe hic jacet bill end of poem this recording is in the public domain early friendship by aubrey thomas de vere from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by sonia early friendship the half-seen memories of childish days when pains and pleasures lightly came and went the sympathies of boyhood rashly spent in fearful wanderings through forbidden ways the vague but manly wish to tread the maze of life to noble ends whereon intent asking to know for what man here is sent 
the bravest heart must often pause and gaze the firm resolve to seek the chosen end of manhood's judgment cautious and mature each of these viewless bonds binds friend to friend with strength no selfish purpose can secure my happy lot is this that all attend that friendship which first came and which shall last endure end of poem this recording is in the public domain young friends from a midsummer night's dream act three scene two by shakespeare from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by lian yao young friends oh is all forgot all school days friendship childhood innocence we hermia like two artificial gods have with our needles created both one flower both on one sampler sitting on one cushion both warbling of one song both in one key as if our hands our sides voices and minds had been incorporate so we grew together like to a double cherry seeming parted but yet in union and partition two lovely berries moulded on one stem so with two seeming bodies but one heart two of the first like coats in heraldry do but to one and crowned with one crest and will you rent your ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend it is not friendly tis not maidenly End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Friendship from Hamlet, Act Three, Scene Two, by William Shakespeare, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator, Leanya as Hamlet, and Craig Franklin as Horatio friendship from hamlet act three scene two horatio thou art e'en as just a man as e'er my conversation coped with all o oh, my dear lord nay do not think i flatter for what advancement may i hope from thee that no revenue hast but thy good spirits to feed and clothe thee why should the poor be flattered no let the candy tongue lick absurd pomp and crook the pregnant hinges of the knee where thrift may follow fawning dost thou hear since my dear soul was mistress of her choice and could of men distinguish her election hath sealed thee for herself for thou hast been as one in suffering all that suffers nothing a man that fortune's buffets and rewards has ta'en with equal thanks and blessed are those whose blood and judgment are so well commingled that they are not a pipe for fortune's finger to sound what stop she please give me that man that is not passion's slave and i will wear him in my heart's core i in my heart of heart as i do thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain the memory of the heart by daniel webster from the world's best poetry Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. The Memory of the Heart. If stores of dry and learned law we gain, we keep them in the memory of the brain. Names, things, and facts, whate'er we knowledge call, there is the common ledger for them all. And images on this cold surface traced make slight impression and are soon effaced. But we've a page, more glowing and more bright, On which our friendship and our love do write, That these may never from the soul depart, We trust them to the memory of the heart. There is no dimming, no effacement there, Each new pulsation keeps the record clear, Warm golden letters all the tablet fill, Nor lose their lustre till the heart stands still. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Wayfaring Song by Henry Van Dyke From The World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 2 
Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. A Wayfaring Song Oh, who will walk a mile with me along life's merry way? A comrade, blithe and full of glee, who dares to laugh out loud and free, and let his frolic fancy play, like a happy child, through the flowers gay, that fill the field and fringe the way, where he walks a mile with me. And who will walk a mile with me along life's weary way? A friend whose heart has eyes to see, the stars shine out o'er the darkening lee, and the quiet rest at the end of the day, a friend who knows and dares to say the brave sweet words that cheer the way where he walks a mile with me. With such a comrade, such a friend, I fain would walk till journey's end, through summer sunshine, winter rain, and then, farewell, we shall meet again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Parted Friends by James Montgomery From the World's Best Poetry Volume 1 Home and Friendship Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao Parted Friends Friend after friend departs Who hath not lost a friend? There is no union here of hearts That finds not here an end Where this frail world I only rest Living or dying none were blessed Beyond the flight of time, beyond this veil of death, There surely is some blessed clime where life is not to breath, Nor life's affections transient fire, Whose sparks fly upward to expire. There is a world above, where parting is unknown, A whole eternity of love formed for the good alone, And faith beholds the dying here, Translated to that happier sphere. Thus star by star declines, till all are passed away, as morning high and higher shines to pure and perfect day. Nor sink those stars in empty night, they hide themselves in heaven's own light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When to the Sessions of Sweet Silent Thought Sonnet 30 by Shakespeare from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Yao. When to the Sessions of Sweet Silent Thought When to the Sessions of Sweet Silent Thought I summon up remembrance of things past, I sigh the lack of many a thing I sought, And with old woes new wail my dear time's waste, then can I drown an eye unused to flow, For precious friends hid in death's dateless night, And weep afresh love's long since cancelled woe, And moan the expense of many a vanished sight. Then can I grieve at grievances forgone, And heavily from woe to woe tell o'er The sad account of fore bemoaned moan, Which I knew pay, as I not paid before. But if the while I think on thee, dear friend, All losses are restored, and sorrow's end. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jafar by Lee Hunt from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia as the narrator. Craig Franklin as Caliph Haroon, and Thomas Peter as Mondir. Jafar. Jafar, the Barmecide, the good vizier, the poor man's hope, the friend without a peer, Jafar was dead, slain by a doom unjust, and guilty Harun, sullen with mistrust of what the good and even the bad might say, ordained that no man living from that day should dare to speak his name on pain of death. All Araby and Persia held their breath all but the brave mondir he proud to show how far for love a grateful soul could go and facing death for very scorn and grief for his great heart wanted a great relief stood forth in baghdad daily in the square where once had stood a happy house and there harangued the tremblers at the scimitar on all they owed to the divine jafar bring me this man 
the caliph cried the man was brought was gazed upon the mutes began to bind his arms welcome brave cords cried he from bonds far worse jafar delivered me from wants from shames from loveless household fears made a man's eyes friends with delicious tears restored me loved me put me on a par with his great self how can i pay jafar harun who felt that on a soul like this the mightiest vengeance could but fall amiss now deigned to smile as one great lord of fate might smile upon another half as great he said let worth grow frenzied if it will the caliph's judgment shall be master still go and since gifts so move thee take this gem the riches in the tatter's diadem and hold the giver as thou deemest fit gifts cried the friend he took and holding it high toward the heavens as though to meet his star exclaimed this too i owe to thee jafar end of poem this recording is in the public domain the vale of avoca by thomas moore from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by sonia the vale of avoca there is not in this wide world a valley so sweet as that vale in whose bosom the bright waters meet oh the last ray of feeling and life must depart ere the bloom of that valley shall fade from my heart yet it was not that nature had shed over the scene her purest of crystal and brightest of green twas not the soft magic of streamlet or hill oh no it was something more exquisite still twas that friends the beloved of my bosom were near who made every dear scene of enchantment more dear and who felt how the best charms of nature improve when we see them reflected from looks that we love sweet vale of avoca how calm could i rest in thy bosom of shade with the friends i love best where the storms that we feel in this cold world should cease and our hearts like thy waters be mingled in peace end of poem this recording is in the public domain we have been friends together by caroline elizabeth sarah norton from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. We have been friends together. We have been friends together, in sunshine and in shade, Since first beneath the chestnut tree in infancy we played. But coldness dwells within thy heart, a cloud is on thy brow. We have been friends together, shall a light word part us now? We have been gay together, we have laughed at little jests, for the fount of hope was gushing warm and joyous in our breasts. But laughter now hath fled thy lip, and sullen glooms thy brow. We have been gay together, shall a light word part us now? We have been sad together, we have wept with bitter tears, O'er the grass-grown graves where slumbered the hopes of early years. The voices which were silent then would bid thee cheer thy brow. We have been sad together, shall a light word part us now? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Too Late I Stayed by William Robert Spencer From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Too Late I Stayed too late i stayed forgive the crime unheeded flew the hours how noiseless falls the foot of time that only treads on flowers and who with clear account remarks the ebbing of this glass when all its sands are diamond sparks that dazzle as they pass 
oh who to sober measurement time's happy swiftness brings when birds of paradise have lent their plumage to his wings end of poem this recording is in the public domain we are brethren ah by robert nickel from the world's best poetry volume one home and friendship part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama we are brethren ah a happy bit hame this old world would be if men when they're here could make shift to agree and ilk said to his neighbour in cottage and ah come give me our hand we are brethren ah i ken na why i we another should fight when to gree would make a body cosy and right when man meets wi man tis the best way ever to say give me your hand we are brethren ah my coat is a coarse ein, and yours may be fine and i maun drink water while you may drink wine but we baith have a lale heart unspotted to shaw say give me your hand we are brethren all the knave ye would scorn the unfaithful deride ye would stand like a rock with the truth on your side Sigh would I, on not what else I value a straw, then give me your hand, we are brethren all. Ye would scorn to do fousely by woman or man, I hod by the right eye as weel as I can. We are ain in our joys, our affections and ah, come give me your hand, we are brethren all. Your mither has loved you as mithers can loathe, and mine has done for me what mithers can do. We are an high and lie, and we should not be twa. Say, so give me your hand, we are brethren all. We love the same simmer day, sunny and fair. Hame, oh, how we love it, and ah, that are there. Fray the pure air of heaven, the same life we draw. Come, give me your hand, we are brethren all. Frail, shaken, old age will soon come o'er us both, and creeping along at his back will be death. Sign into the same mither yerd we are fa. Come, give me your hand. We are brethren all. Robert Nickel. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wife, Children, and Friends by William Robert Spencer from the World's Best Poetry, Volume One, Home and Friendship, Part Two. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama wife children and friends when the black lettered list to the gods was presented the list of what fate for each mortal intends at the long string of ills a kind goddess relented and slipped in three blessings wife children and friends in vain surly pluto maintained he was cheated for justice divine could not compass its ends the scheme of man's penance he swore was defeated for earth becomes heaven with wife children and friends if the stock of our bliss is in stranger hands vested the fund ill secured often bankruptcy ends but the heart issues bills which are never protested when drawn on the firm of wife children and friends though valor still glows in his life's dying embers the death-wounded tar who his colors defends drops a tear of regret as he dying remembers how blessed was his home with wife children and friends the soldier whose deeds live immortal in story whom duty to far distant latitudes sends with transport would barter whole ages of glory for one happy day with wife children and friends though spice-breathing gales on his caravan hover though for him all arabia's fragrance ascends the merchant still thinks of the woodbines that cover the bower where he sat with wife children and friends the dayspring of youth still unclouded by sorrow alone on itself for enjoyment depends but drear is the twilight of age if it borrow no warmth from the smile of wife children and friends let the breath of renown ever freshen and nourish the lore which o'er the dead favorite bends o'er me wave the willow and long may it flourish bedewed with the tears of wife children and friends 
let us drink for my song growing graver and graver to subjects too solemn insensibly tends let us drink pledge me high love and virtue shall flavor the glass which i fill to wife children and friends william robert spencer end of poem this recording is in the public domain Benedicite by John Greenleaf Whittier From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter Benedicite God's love and peace be with thee Wheresoever this soft autumnal air Lifts the dark tresses of thy hair Whether through city casements Comes its kiss to thee In crowded rooms Or out among the woodland blooms it freshens o'er thy thoughtful face imparting in its glad embrace beauty to beauty grace to grace fair nature's book together read the old wood paths that knew our tread the maple shadows overhead the hills we climbed the river seen by gleams along its deep ravine all keep thy memory fresh and green where i look where I stray, thy thought goes with me on my way, and hence the prayer I breathe today. O'er lapse of time and change of scene, the weary waste which lies between thyself and me, my heart I lean. Thou lacks not friendship's spell word, nor the half unconscious power to draw all hearts to thine by love's sweet law. With these good gifts of God is cast thy lot and many a charm thou hast to hold the blessed angels fast if then a fervent wish for thee the gracious heavens will heed from me what should dear heart its burden be the sighing of a shaken reed what can i more than meekly plead the greatness of our common need god's love unchanging pure and true the paraclete white shining through his peace the fall of herman's dew with such a prayer on this sweet day as thou mayst hear and i may say i greet thee dearest far away end of poem this recording is in the public domain when in disgrace sonnet 29 by william shakespeare from the world's best poetry volume 1 Home and Friendship, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org, by Jason in Panama. When in Disgrace, Sonnet 29 When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state, And trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries, And look upon myself and curse my fate, Wishing me like to one more rich in hope, Featured like him, like him with friends possessed desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what i most enjoy contented least yet in these thoughts myself almost despising haply i think on thee and then my state like to the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth sings hymns at heaven's gate for thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings and then I scorn to change my state with kings. Shakespeare End of Poem This recording is in the public domain. Jenny Kissed Me by Lee Hunt From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 1, Home and Friendship, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Jenny Kissed Me jenny kissed me when we met jumping from the chair she sat in time you thief who love to get sweets into your list put that in say i'm weary say i'm sad say that health and wealth have missed me say i'm growing old but add jenny kissed me lee hunt end of poem this recording is in the public domain